All right, welcome back everyone. This is gonna be the uh, second video on me catching you guys up on what I've already done before so that we can we can move forward and uh, start this channel and, and follow everything I'm doing. So I, hear, I have here laid out on my desk um, the first prototype of some of the movements of the exoskeleton and how it's gonna work. These parts were all 3D, 3D printed on my uh, FlashForge Creator Pro, which is a decent little um, um, 3D printer. Uh, Nothing amazing, but it, it does pretty good prints. So this is all printed in PLA. This is before I moved to PETG. Um, PLA is pretty good. It's got pretty good rigidity. Uh, just can't get it hot, so you can't leave it in a hot car or something like that because it'll warp. Um, so this right here is the left arm. Um, it actually started off with this super simple idea, this wood, and I was going to just make and put an actuator on there, and I didn't do any calculations, and this thing was way too flimsy. Um, obviously, this would be made out of metal, and then the theory for this was these parts would actually all be um, water jet cut, and that would allow me to essentially do this without having access to a machine shop. Um, well, a CNC mill really is what I would need to, to properly do this. Um, I'm not sure if that's still gonna be the case with the actual exoskeleton. In fact, I'm actually sure it's not gonna be that way, um, but this one was designed to be all uh, cut out of um, half inch, or sorry, um, quarter inch uh, steel and then welded together. Um, by the way, it, got, it's a, it was a really good exercise in how this works. So um, I'm gonna put this on in a second to show you guys, but I wanna talk about a little bit of the theory behind this. So my main theory um, is the idea that I call um, um, aligned axis of rotation. So that is how I build my exoskeleton. So there's some other companies out there building exoskeletons, namely Sarcos, they're an American company. Um, if you look them up, you'll see some of their uh, work on some of their exoskeletons. They, they've got a whole lot of governmental money and, and are building this stuff and, in my opinion, aren't doing a very good job. Um, just just doesn't really move. It, 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 might, it may have some, um, I shouldn't say they're not doing a good job. They, they, they may have some specific industry um, where they might be able to hit. But as far as building a, a, a fully functional, something that integrates very, very closely with the human, I think they're off. Their main thing they do is their exoskeleton sits off the body. So as it moves, um, so if you imagine if you drew a line from around my arm, it would be X distance, and then if it came this way, it'd be some distance smaller than X, like 0.8X or something like that. Um, so it lengthens and shortens. So the only way to keep that from happening with an exoskeleton is to get the center, the center axis um, of your body's joint to align with the axis, the center axis of the exoskeleton. So if you look in here, hopefully this will come up on the camera, it's dark, but um, hopefully you'll be able to see it. This is where the shoulder would go. Um, this design is gonna change. I'm gonna talk about where we're going with this, but for now we'll, we'll talk about this. This is the shoulder joint, um, and there's actually three different movements on this one. So there's uh, up and down, there's in and out, and then there's um, out this way, abduction, adduction. Um, so this one, the arm comes through here and this lines up with the, uh, the uh, shoulder joint this way. Um, this one lines up this way. These are all off at um, 90 degrees to each other. So one axis going through this way, which is this. One axis to allow abduction, adduction. That's this joint right here, like that. And then this joint right here didn't, doesn't work amazingly well, but this would be the last one right here for internal and external rotation of the arm. So that's the shoulder, um, same kind of thing. This right here uh, is just a normal hinge joint on your elbow, so this is a very simple thing. It can be uh, off the body, but um, still aligned with the axis of rotation. So the theory of doing this is it's actually kind of difficult to align the axis of rotation um, because obviously the axis of rotation are through your body. Um, so the only way to really do it is would be to go into your body, and obviously that doesn't work because you're in the way. Um, so you have to get clever and do these kind of ring designs or put them off to the side in some cases, like these joints and these joints, um, in order to, to align them without obviously going through the center of your body. So I don't think people are going to get surgery to, to put these in. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how that works. Um, this is actually would be a little bit... Uh, um, cantered. Um, the uh, axis of rotation is through this, so it's at an angle, and then your uh, um, your bones rotate around each other, so the, the, the axis is like this, and then you, your body folds over like this. So this would be cantered. Um, like I said, a lot of this is going to change. I'm going to show you guys kind of where we're going and what we're going to build um, after that. Uh, this, the hand here, um, is going to be doesn't really have any joints in right now. This is kind of a first stab at how this might work, but the tendons are fairly 
similar to how it's going to work. So there's going to be, um, this is the same way your finger works too, there's two tendons coming into each finger. And so one will pull your fingers this way, and then the other one will curl your fingers like this. Um, and so the idea behind this is there's going to be um, some of my smaller exomuscles in here. Right here, there's not enough room for these, so these are going to be mounted a lot different than they are right now. But the muscles will come through here, and then when powered on, you'll have grip. Um, this likely will be all controlled by one um, power unit, so this will essentially just be a grip assist. And then so fine motor skills will still have to be done by the wear, probably. It may be possible to put an actuator on each muscle, and then you'd have full kind of actuation over the entire hand. Um, so this is actually going to change a lot. Uh, a lot of this is going to change a lot, actually. Um, and, and I'll show you that. But um, And then on this this case, this was designed originally to be like a, a, a mock um, exoskeleton, which I'm probably not going to do anymore. Um, but this was just, just going to be have two muscles on each side. Well, two sets of muscles on each side. Uh, the bicep here um, was going to come between here and here, and this was had to be structured around it. This is really the only way is to, to set the muscle in here is the only way to get it to fit because in my simulations, the force on this exoskeleton is so strong that it can literally just pull metal apart um, because these things produce about five tons of force. So encapsulating it in steel was really the only way to do it. Um, on the exoskeleton, I'm going to build the full version. There's going to be some composite materials because I can't do this everywhere in, in the exoskeleton. So especially on the, um, the, uh, the shoulder is one of the hardest joints to design for, and it's where I've spent most of my time designing. Um, there's other things as well, but the shoulder is, is, is the hardest because um, there's so much motion in the shoulder and it still has to be stable. So um, the clavicle um, bone, the exobone, the clavicle exobone is going to be one of the more complicated, probably the most complicated part to design from a structural standpoint, and it's going to have to be made out of a high strength composite. But I'll explain that with a, uh, um, a design I've done in a bit. So um, I think I've pretty much explained everything on this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on for you guys and actually show you the uh, the motion. And you'll see that it, it sticks with your body pretty well. And this was just a first um, stab at this. Um, I've done um, done a new design, and then I have also have a, a, a high-res 3D scan of my body now. So this was all done with a ruler and um, stuff like that, really kind of get a way to, to measure myself and, and then build this for me. But it ended up fitting fairly well. Um, and I went through a few iterations. This isn't the first one. So I built stuff and took it apart, built stuff and took it apart. I have other parts um, over here and stuff. So, But this, this is kind of where this one stopped. And then the next one is also going to be 3D printed. Um, that's what I'm building next. Um, but it's going to be a full body exoskeleton. So I'll go ahead and put this on and show you guys how it moves. All right, so here is me wearing the exoskeleton. So I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, this thing is not super structural. I've gotten better at 3D printing stuff and holding it together. Um, the parts that it's gonna, this is gonna pop off as I talk, I'm sure of it. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of talk through some of it. So the, um, the straps, at least on the back, were originally designed to um, represent, they were placed where I was gonna originally put um, exomuscles when I initially thought this through. So that's probably changed a little bit on some of that, but um, that was the initial idea on that. So um, the don't mind the structure on the body, that's gonna be completely different. Um, well, this will be sort of similar, but it's gonna split open and these ribs will be a little different as well. Um, one thing that's majorly different is this uh, clavicle here is on the front. Like I said, it's gonna be on the back or um, it will be on the back, which I'll talk about in a second. But this right here actually uh, collapses in right now, um, which was the idea was to get this forward and backward motion of the shoulder girdle. Um, that ended up not working very well um, because what will happen is when this is under heavy load, this is going to push down. It's going to anchor across here, and then this is going to be compressed. And so if you put a really heavy load on your hand, it's going to push into your shoulder because this doesn't have anything to hold it out. So this is completely uh, a different design now. This um, scissor design doesn't work very well. Um, so here, I'll just actually you it kind of moving so here it is the forearm that works really good the hand moves um, this right here on the top is going to be uh, completely different um, it's not going to be this design I have a uh, some axes um, that are going to be here and here allow for this and this um, this sliding motion although very Iron Man esque does not work very well um, so just really the only way to figure out this stuff doesn't work is just to build it and test it you really can't think your way into a lot of this stuff um, so Here's the uh, twisting motion. You can see the arm here, and then the uh, the, sh the shoulder moves around quite well. 
Um, and even this, which isn't a great design joint, actually moves pretty well. But you can see I have really a very wide uh, range of motion on this. And you can see as I lift my arm, there is not really a change, or there shouldn't be any change at all in the, uh, the length of the exoskeleton relative to my body. Um, and that's one of the uh, important things I was talking about on the um, aligned axis of rotation theory of mine. Um, so that's, that's really important. Um, and you can see I have quite the range of motion on this. I mean, I can reach um, kind of all over without really coming into any hang ups with the body. And then this isn't even actuated yet. Um, put an artificial neural net uh, controlling the exoskeleton. Um, this, is, this motion will be even smoother because there'll be actuation on here. But just, you know, a printed out of super low tolerance parts um, that are sticky and um, aren't really lubricated and aren't polished and all that, you can still see that I'm getting a really high level of, uh, of, of movement and um, motion out of this. Uh, the, uh, the hand is going to change entirely. This is, um, I believe, is dangerous. So uh, each, each tendon will have close to a thousand pounds of force on it. Um, so. I think having the rings wrap all the way around your finger is dangerous. So one thing I'm going to change on the new design is there's going to be two tendons replacing each of these. Uh, so essentially be the same tendon, but they'll be disperse the load to either side. And these will be essentially U-shaped pieces um, like this. And then there'll be some strong kind of Kevlar um, connecting the two so there's more fabric and the, the metal can't clamp down around your hand as much. Um, so these are a little tight on my fingers anyway. They're a little hard to get on and off. Um, works, you know, first pass. Didn't, did, not amazing, but it works fairly well. So, um, so yeah, there's there's the uh, the arm, and um, as you can see, the motion is is, is pretty cool, um, and it works pretty well. Um, so we really do have full full range of motion of the uh, the, the shoulder girdle, uh, which is well the shoulder um, joint. The, the girdle is actually not completely figured out on fleshed out on this design yet, but. Um, but there's that. There's some, some a little teaser of kind of what's to come um, and some of the stuff I've worked on before. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch over. I'm going to show you a, a, a drawing, a kind of uh, thought process of, of where the future of the designs are going. So um, we'll switch over there and we'll do that. All right. So here's the uh, drawing I developed. Um, so I've done this before, once before. Um, to a much less thought out extent. Um, but doing something like this really just, it's time consuming and it's not necessarily building, um, you know, exoskeletons. Uh, so why do I do it? I do it because doing this kind of thing forces me to really think things all the way through. Um, sometimes you think you have stuff figured out, um, you know, because I've been thinking about this exoskeleton for years and it kind of consumes me. So I'm always thinking about it really. And I thought, oh, you know, I got it all figured out. And then as I started to drive bike, I can. I'm going to draw this and figure it all out. I thought it was going to take me like two days and it ended up taking me, I was in like a full flow state, um, sitting in here, uh, working a lot, getting this done, um, for about a week and a half, almost two weeks, uh, that it took me to get this all figured out. Um, I had to go through and rethink a lot of things. So, um, there was lots and lots of drawing and racing and drawing and racing and drawing and racing and thinking through how, how this was all going to fit and work together. So um, on here, uh, gray represents the actual exoskeleton. Um, the black represents the exomuscles. And the blue uh, is the kind of base layer um, with that, um, except for my face, which is uh, um, my skin tone. Um, so let's kind of walk through some of this stuff. So these right here are not ribs. Um, these right here are uh, um, um, parts of the spines. There's sp each of them is actually a spinal column. So there's three here and then two here. Um, so the way these work is this is actually going to be um, a sort of part of a ball and socket joint. Um, so that's been essentially cut down to just two little pieces that are going to be aligned along the axis this way and here. So on your back, it'll be further back, and then your um, spine more or less runs straight to the middle of your neck, so right on the side of your neck. Um, and these are going to have also ligaments that come up and hit the center of the axis of rotation and then are piped through to the other side, and that allows them to go up and down without being pulled apart. Um, that probably sounds confusing. It may confuse you guys. Uh, it's okay. We're going to build this and I'm going to, I'm going to cat it up in Fusion 360. That's going to be a videos to come pretty soon. Um, and then we'll print it and I'll actually show you guys how it works. So if some of this stuff doesn't make full sense, that's okay. You can just wait for the other videos to come out. But if you're curious on what's going on, I'm going to kind of explain through all of this and what this is. So uh, if you get bored with it, feel free to, to 
to turn the video off or whatever and, and wait for a future video where I'm actually going to build this stuff. But if not, um, we're going to go ahead and run through kind of everything on here. So. Um, so that's how that works, and the, the main reason for doing the uh, the ball and socket kind of joint in here, in here, and then here, and here, um, is that it's going to allow for really high amount of force this way. So this is really going to cup, and it's going to allow for huge amounts of force um, downward, and that's important because these are two of my larger size muscles, and I calculated across through here, there's four uh, muscles at 30,000 pounds, um, it's 120,000 pounds, and then two at 10. Um, so... Um, 150,000 pounds of force pulling down on this part. So these have got to be really strong um, in a, uh, a load-bearing way this way. Um, Tensile-wise, uh, tensile strength being like so being pulled apart um, doesn't have to be as strong. There's going to be Kevlar reinforcement. There's nothing, the muscles aren't really being pulled apart. So really it's just to hold it together and then, I don't know, you're Iron Man, you're fighting some bad guy. I guess you don't want him ripping you in half. But um, that's really, you know, it's more there just to kind of hold everything together. And then the structure will be kind of this way to hold holds um, the handle the huge tremendous loads coming over the uh, the exo muscles um, less less of a load up here I think only um, four of the one inch size muscles so we're looking at about forty thousand pounds of force on that um, so you can see those two here and then these two here um, these two are the sternocleidic mastoid muscles the muscles that you see on the side of your neck those allow you to they're both actuated, it bends the head forward. Um, if one is actuated and these are, are stopped, um, held out, it's going to rotate um, the head. If this one is actuated, rotate the head this way, and this one's actuated, rotate the head this way. This muscle back here will um, pitch the head back. These muscles back here will pitch the head back, um, but will also uh, um, levitate the uh, shoulder girdle via um, the uh, clavicle. Now you'll notice the clavicle is on the back um, and that's just kind of how it worked out. The clavicle, even though you're on your body, is in the front. The clavicle here is on the back. Now these joints aren't quite exactly how they're going to look. Um, oops, I'm missing a line in there. Um, anyway, uh, these joints will be lined up in your, your um, sternoclavicular joint, which is where your um, clavicle attaches to your sternum, those axes of rotation, the, the way your bones work is kind of interesting. They actually kind of work a lot like this does. So even this looks like a weird joint design, you don't see it in robotics or, or aerospace really anywhere that often. You do see it all the time in biology. Um, and so the way muscles work, uh, um, sorry, joints work in the body is they kind of tend to, to be like this. So they're kind of like mostly ball and socket joints in a way, even though they're not all necessarily classified as ball and socket joints, they tend to work like this. So uh, the humerus um, in your arm works this way, the, uh, the hip joint works this way, but they work like this. So the axis of rotation is actually not inside the joint itself, it's off and somewhere in the bone usually. Um, so that's true for, for your hip and for um, your uh, humerus and also for your clavicle. So the clavicle axes of rotation are essentially right down the center or very close. They might be slightly offset from the center. Um, so this joint is going to be a joint like that that's going to be kind of, um, it'll be made out of a series of metals. So it'll be very strong, but um, it'll be two curved pieces that essentially wrap around like this. And that's going to allow you to um, to levitate and uh, depress your shoulder girdle via the uh, clavicle, so up and down. So essentially shrugging your shoulders this way. Um, and then this line represents, uh, this is kind of thought out, but it, it just this is how it would look, um, but if you're looking at it from a top view, you would have a similar joint to that rounding joint this way, um, lining up with the uh, the clavicle, but instead it would be um, from the top, it'd be going this way, and what that does and simulates is uh, as you would push your shoulder girdle forward, um, so uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of a... Um, um, a movement that would require you to do that, but essentially, if you reach, um, your shoulder girdle is going forward. Uh, so this has to, because it's not aligned perfectly. The exoskeleton isn't, isn't literally built into your body, like we were talking about with the uh, um, aligned axes of rotation. Uh, this actually has to lengthen, um, or as you pushed your arm forward, uh, this would appear to shorten um, on your body. So uh, it has to lengthen, um, or and put another way, this as it moves forward, this axis has to be aligned with um, on, from the top down um, with the clavicle joint. So essentially, what's going to happen 
is as you shrug forward, this is going to slide this way, which will allow your arm shoulder to come forward, but will also put the axis of rotation. So if the, the body was like this and the clavicle was here, this would go out like this, and that would um, put the axis of rotation at the center of the clavicle. So it would go like that. Um, and then this is just a normal um, uh, hinge joint here that goes right through the... Uh, um, um, the joint between the arm and the uh, shoulder girdle, um, so your, where your humerus attaches to your clavicle and scapula. Um, so this allows for up and down motion of the arm, um, so uh, abduction and adduction. Um, and then over here, there will be another joint, and that will allow for, um, I believe it's called horizontal and or I think vertical abduction adduction, so essentially bringing your arm up um, like this. There's a joint in here right there um, that does that. And then we have a bunch of muscle attachment points right here. This right here is the um, um, pectoralis minor, and that will push your shoulder uh, girdle forward. Um, so this muscle will essentially actuate that joint right there. Um, these right here are the uh, um, pec major. The reason they come down the front, and this is why this load is so heavy over the uh, the abs here is because this muscle has to be long enough because there's a huge amount of travel and a very small amount of room to put an exhale muscle. So the, the arm can go really, really far in and out, um, but the there's not a lot of room to put an exhale muscle, especially as you push your arm forward, everything bunches up in here. So the, really the only way to do it is to anchor it around, um, it'll be a swivel here, and then bring it down somewhere else. So the nice thing about exo muscles is they're flexible, so um, at least in theory, we should be able to wrap them around things. Um, and then back here, there's a similar idea going on with the um, um, uh, latissimus dorsi, exo latissimus dorsi there. So, and then you'll notice that these are on this kind of uh, wing-shaped thing um, here. So underneath here is the uh, biceps, so there's two here, um, and those We'll talk about there, but they're going to um, rotate the uh, um, the forearm, um, and then there's here is the tricep, which is a bigger muscle um, to extend. So they'll rotate the forearm as well as you know uh, uh, flex the um, the elbow joint, and then. Um, this right, these two muscles move the arm around in a lot of different ways, um, but they're also going to uh, internal and external rotation of the. Um, arm. So essentially this motion right here is going to be uh, actuated via the um, main movers of the arm as well as doing all the other motions. So the idea behind a lot of this stuff is to essentially using the smallest number of muscles get the most amount of movement because um, it's hard to put lots and lots of actuators, you know, wires are going to add up, um, fluid, uh, reservoir fluid to all those is going to add up. It's going to get difficult to put a lot of muscles in one place. So we want to do as much as possible with some of them. And maybe I'm overstepping that a little bit. Maybe I've done that a little too much in some places. So as we develop, we're going to see that and hopefully figure those out. But that's the idea with some of this. So um, there's also here, these will depress the uh, the um, the uh, clavicle here and the shoulder girdle there. So, um, so these right here, as I said, will... Um, internal and externally rotate these. So these are essentially anchored into um, a type of uh, geared system. So uh, the gear will go up, so the torque will go down, but the movement ratio will go down. So there'll be like a small amount of travel coming in out of here that'll spin something. And then you can see this is on a gear. So it'll actually be uh, brought around via um, some pulley systems. So same kind of material this is made out of Kevlar will come up here and pulley into here and that will allow rotation here. So you're going to get um, quite a few motions out of two muscles. You're going to get this mus motion and then you're also going to get rotation this way and this way out of these two muscles. Um, and then moving down here are the the muscles of the uh, hand like I talked about um, and some of the designs in the uh, the hand which you can take a look at. Um, this right here is going to, so these muscles will all pull but they will also uh, flex the hand so there's going to be another muscle back here just one large one to offset that and push it back the other way um, so let's start going down the body now so here we have um, the uh, oblique muscles and those will act to rotate the trunk um, and then these muscles will also act to uh, to to, to um, flex and extend the trunk like this so um, then we've moved down um, we have uh, these two muscles will be extending the leg now. Uh, one thing I should talk about is these muscles go over two um, um, 
joints usually, which is seems odd if you don't know a whole lot about biology, and I was kind of amazed when I first learned this, but most muscles, especially most of the large muscles and important muscles in your body, go over two joints. So um, your bicep, for instance, doesn't even attach at all into your humerus. It goes, So it bypasses this bone completely, attaches up in your shoulder girdle, and attaches in your forearm, but it doesn't attach at all into the humerus, which is very interesting. But the reason for that um, is that it allows for more fluid motion if you're doing something like pulling your arm up like this, or your tricep does the same thing too. It goes from your shoulder girdle to your elbow, so throwing. So if you were to throw a spear or something, or a rock or whatever you're throwing, um, that motion is done by one major muscle, and then your minor muscles come in to kind of mod modulate that. So that's this happens a lot in biology. It happens a lot in the lower limbs as well. Um, so like jumping is mostly done uh, by the... Um, the gastroc down here, and in this case, it's going to attach a lot. We'll get to that in a second. So that'll, uh, these will both be extenders. This will be extender of the shank, and this will be extender of the um, foot here. Um, and then this right here uh, um, um, is a flexor and extender, and also a rotator. These two are rotators, flexors, and extenders of the hip joint. So you can see here they attach down here, and then this one's straight right now because it's rotated this way. And then if this one were to straighten out, it would rotate it in. Um, and then it'll also flex the hip back, or in this case, um, or I'm sorry, extend the hip back, and then this would be to flex the hip back, so the hip flexor there extender right there um, and then this would be the uh, biceps femoris down here um, so these come down um, they kind of anchor around right here this is how I initially drew them it might not end up being done that way but um, those will come down um, they're just offset right here they'll probably add a little bit of rotational value but these will be doing the main part of that um, and then they're gonna come down anchor into here and then we have that same type of geared pulley system down here that will um, rotate the shank, the lower leg. Um, one important thing to notice about biology is that when your leg is ex uh, um, um, straight like this, you lose the ability to rotate the shank, and it's not until you bend your knee um, that you're able to rotate the shank. So this doesn't have a mechanical system built in yet, but I'm still working on designs for that, but that's something to keep in mind with how biology works. Um, so essentially, if you bend your knee, you can twist your foot, um, but then if you straighten your knee, you can still twist your foot, but all the rotation is coming from your uh, um, hip. It's not coming from any rotation in the knee, but if you bend your knee, you can rotate your knee. It's just kind of interesting thing about biology. Um, and then coming down here, uh, there's two muscles of the gastroc, two heads of the gastroc, nemius, um, and those will uh, plantar, fl uh, plantar flex the foot, um, and then they will also uh, anchor in down here, and they're also going to um, plantar flex the toes as well. So this would be like, these muscles will be very important for uh, walking and jumping. Um, and this is how, so these will not only um, actuate over the ankle, but will also push the tip of the toes down a little bit. Um, so that, that'll be a, a useful function, I believe. Um, so then there's two of those as well, because they also will anchor in on either side, and they'll allow you to um, pronate and supinate your foot in there. So that's what those do as well. So I believe that's a pretty good overview. Um, this is your deltoid right here. I don't think I mentioned this muscle. Um, that allows you just to abduct your um, 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 arm and then they would counter the, the motion of the uh, um, pec and lat functioning together to bring the arm down with a lot more force, obviously, than this one will produce, but that's also how biology tends to work. Um, see if I've missed anything in here. Obviously, this is a lot, and this might be hard to visualize. I drew it, obviously, so I can see it all. I'm sure looking at this, you're like, maybe this guy's crazy. Um, but it'll make a lot more sense as I actually start to build it. And obviously, this is probably going to change a lot. This is not necessarily a, a hard blueprint. This is an idea to help me get started. Um, this was getting all the ideas out because I, I realized I couldn't just go and build this. I would lose my mind because I'd have to be rebuilding and building and rebuilding and building. If I'm going to take this and try to build something from it, I need to have at least some of the, or the majority of the ideas at least thought out to a degree, and then I'm sure I'm going to run into problems I already have as I started doing some of the catting. This is going to change, but this at least gets everything down on paper in a way that I can look at it and then go off of this as, a par as opposed to starting at a, at a um, blank slate. So, um, so where I'm going from this. So now what I'm going to do is, and there's going to be a series of videos posted on this, and it'll be if you've um, 
never done much modeling or sculpting with um, Fusion 360, they're going to be a great series of videos to watch and see how I operate um, Fusion 360. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to model all this, and then this is all going to be 3D printed and put on. So it'll be a functional, non-powered suit. Um, so the actuators are going to be made out of rubber. Um, just, they won't be powered, uh, but they'll be there uh, to, to represent it. And then I'll put it on and be able to see how it all works and figure out all the motion of this. And then after that, then we'll build a metal powered functioning um, side of this. And then um, you're probably thinking, how is this thing even um, measured? And I'm not going to get into it a whole lot here, but essentially there'll be a uh, deep reinforcement learning AI that'll um, look at a lot of um, pressure sensors inside the suit and also some EMG sensors inside the sh suit. And then the goal of the uh, um, artificial neural net is going to be to keep the wearer in the middle of the suit. Um, so that sounded like uh, gibberish to you guys. It's okay. I'm going to do a, a video s series on that as well. Um, and the development of that, I have a computer designed, uh, an, an NVIDIA computer designed for doing artificial neural nets. Um, so there's going to be a series of videos coming out on those as well. Um, I believe that is pretty much it. Oh, I, we didn't talk about how it's going to go on. Um, you can see right here, this is going to open up. So this will open up all the way down. And then the legs will actually also hinge open. And then the goal is to do that on the uh, arm as well. But um, this just is too um, complicated. So what's going to happen is this is probably, well, what I believe is going to happen is this is going to open up here and then the, the um, this will open up here and then all the way up the sides will open up. Um, you can see some of the hinges I drew in over here. Well, so this will all open up and then the arms will probably fold back a little bit and then you'll kind of reach back and slide your arm down and fit in and then the rest will kind of close on you. So um, Iron Man S to be able to pop open, you know, in the, the first movie he had a robot put him on, but um, I think it's probably actually better to design it more like it was later in the movies. Um, because being bolted in, it, it may, it, the, the problem is, is getting the actuators over. So it doesn't, it's not really possible just to straight bolt someone into this because you have muscles coming all the way across kind of the, the body in some cases. So um, this is the first idea of how it's going to go together. There's some, there's some mistakes and some of the sizing in here um, on the hips. Um, they stick out a little too far, but, um, but yeah, so, so it'll, hopefully fold open in order to get it on. Hopefully we won't have to have a specialized machine to put it on, though it may happen. Um, I might be looking at this and realize it's just not going to work that well and may have to come up with some other solutions. But this is going to evolve, but I wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of uh, kind of where this is going and what the thoughts are on that. So stay tuned. We have some um, Fusion 360 videos coming out and some design videos, and I'm going to really show you my process of how I do it. I, I've done this. So this video, I have started this after having worked on this for a few years and then decided to start a YouTube video. So I'm just got you guys pretty much all cut up now. Um, so now you actually get to see me work and build, and we're going to kind of evolve and, and go through this all together. Um, so it should be quite exciting. So uh, stay tuned, and we're going to start building this soon. All right, until next time, thank you for watching.